testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Happy Nibiru Monday. This is Mike from Someonesbones.com, the internet's premier source of Nibiru news and information. We caught wind of a story last night that we printed this morning. It's timely, relevant, and topical. I'm going to go ahead and read the story, and then offer some additional commentary, my own thoughts that I had not included in the written piece. So, here comes the story. Stick around if you want to hear my commentary afterwards. The headline reads, British sub tries to nuke Nibiru, ne nearly ignites war. A, a failed ICBM launch involving a British submarine nearly triggered a war between the United States and Great Britain. The nuclear mishap occurred last June, but had gone unreported until the Washington Post printed a story about the HMS Vengeance, a Vanguard-class nuclear submarine. It test-fired a single unarmed Trident ballistic missile 30, 30 miles off the Florida coast. 10 Downing Street jumped on the story. Prime Minister Theresa May admitted the Vengeance had been conducting missile readiness drills and that a faulty missile had spiraled out of control but posed no threat to the United States. The official story is a gross distortion of the truth. Shortly after this post broke the story, Christopher Steele, a highly respected former MI6 operative, provided shocking testimony that contradicts the fictional errant missile narrative. The HMS Vengeance, Steele said, launched a full sortie of 16 armed SLBMs, each carrying four multiple independent re-entry vehicles. One missile had spun out of control and was remotely detonated, while the remaining nuclear weapons raced toward their true destination, Nibiru. This was a clandestine operation, Steele said. No one was supposed to find out. They had to spin a story to conceal the truth. Prime Minister May learned that Nibiru's relative position to the dark side of the sun had made it vulnerable to nuclear weapons. She also learned that last year Kim Jong-un launched nukes at Nibiru to no effect. She thought British American technology would be better. She ordered the operation without informing Parliament. Steele believes the modified Trident D5 ICBMs are powered by a revolutionary propulsion system and are capable of striking Nibiru. Fueled by a mixture of hydrogenated methane and compressed liquid helium, the missiles should intercept the Nibiru system before it intersects Venus's lateral axis sometime in August. Steele does not know the current location of the missiles, but believes they are currently arcing toward the outer solar system to intercept Planet X. He explained the scientific principles. <coughs> Nibiru has a heavy gravity and strong rotational pull. Spin. Steele said, even if the missiles deviate from the plotted course, Nibiru's cent centrifugal force is powerful enough to grab and yank the ICBMs into Nibiru's atmosphere. The resulting explosion should de deflect or destroy Nibiru. According to Steele, the blazing detonation will illuminate the heavens. Persons living at northern latitudes should be able to witness the celestial fireball with the naked eye. Asked why the launch occurred so close to America's territorial waters, Steele said, Very simple. Prime Minister May learned that Florida is closer to Nibiru than is Britain. They launched, they launched for maximum effect from the most optimum location. Yes, this could have provoked a nuclear exchange between the United States and Great Britain, but May was willing to take that chance for queen and country. But she took some precautions. Moments before launch, 10 Downing Street notified the White House of its intentions. Obama had no time to oppose May's plan. The ignition keys had been turned. The launch sequence had been started. Nothing could stop the birds from leaving the silos. Obama had two choices. Either accept May's story or launch a retaliatory strike against Britain. Even back in June, Prime Minister May feared Trump would become president and in her infinite wisdom knew that Trump would have used the nuclear football, a fascination of his, to incinerate Great Britain regardless of any explanation. He is a very impetuous man. Knowing that Obama is somewhat of a pussy, she acted before Trump came into office. Actually, a wise decision, 
it turns out, Steele said. The end of this story remains to be written, but Britain's actions clearly indicate a desire to save the world from a potentially deadly threat. End of story. As often happens, shortly after we print a story, it, they sometimes receive scathing criticism. A quick peek at our comments section proves that. However, we believe Steele to be a brilliant source with unimpeachable credentials. Why, for seven months, did 10 Downing Street and the White House conspire to conceal the story from the press? Some people argue that Prime Minister May feared that, that submarine funding would be cut if the story went public, if any story went public re regarding uh, a mishap with a ICBM armed or not. We, however, believe Steele's version of events over those of an established politician who obviously is going to spin the story for her own political benefit. One comment on our website did make an interesting point. Even if the missiles were launched off the coast of Florida, why was there no visible evidence? A few years ago, a Chinese sub launched a single test ICBM off the coast of Los Angeles. Thousands of people saw the rocket's exhaust. It was even captured on video by a nearby helicopter. So how can we explain the lack of exhaust plumes from 16 ICBMs soaring into space off the coast of Florida? Simple answer, I cannot. Not yet. However, this is an aspect of the story we will investigate. Okay, and finally, I want to retract some comments I made regarding another YouTuber out there called Waptech. Although he is a notorious Nibiru debunker who has made some false claims against my website, I have newfound respect for this dude. Let bygones be bygones, water under the bridge, and all that jazz. I'm not airing anything he himself has not said in his own videos. And I'll link his channel below and his video. Uh, Waptech is an intelligent guy who is unfortunately homeless. A long time ago, I was there myself. I lived on the streets of New York City for six months before a very generous person helped me out. Uh, so Waptech, even if I don't agree with your conclusions, I have mad respect for you. As far as one can tell, there is no donation or GoFundMe link option on your pages. Maybe you don't want that or see it as charity. I don't know. However, if there was, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't hesitate to help out a little bit. And I am sure that others would too, based on the number of positive comments that you receive to the videos that you make. And on that note, I will bring this brief sermon to a close. Remember, visit www.someonesbones.com, the Internet's number one source for Nibiru news. Uh, follow us on YouTube, subscribe. We try to update several times a week. And I hope you've enjoyed listening to my podcast. Check back soon. We'll see you next time. This is Mike from Someone's Bones, signing out.